The Millionaire Maker. The second greatest story ever told may well be the turning point in your life, regardless of your age. The voice you will hear on this recording is that of John Earl Shope, one of the most creative and inspired men of our time. Born with a weak heart and of modest means, his formal schooling did not go beyond the ninth grade. During World War II, he was rejected by the military because of his heart condition. Yet he joined the American Field Services overseas and as an ambulance driver and medical corpsman, was in constant combat duty for over two years. This caused irreparable damage to his heart, but it enkindled a determination to devote his remaining years to some service which would help man achieve greater fulfillment. Starting as a pants presser after the war, he became a millionaire in less than four years and subsequently headed several large corporations with unprecedented success. He was intimately acquainted with the outstanding men of industry and government, but never wavered in his drive to awaken men and women of all ages to their true potential. He frequently toured the country, telling spellbound audiences that life never, never withholds anything from anyone. Love, health, supply, companionship, employment, all these exist in infinite abundance. We alone are the ones who prevent our own good from flowing simply because we are not aware of nature's abundance and the tremendous power dormant in each of us, power which unfortunately remains untapped because we don't know how to release and set in motion the activities which function these laws. He felt one of life's great tragedies was man's persistence in clinging so tenaciously to lack and limitation. The true mark of greatness is not just in what a man accomplishes himself, but in his ability to help others help themselves and realize that they too can become great. John Earl Schulf was such a man, but what is more, he had that rare ability of simplifying the laws of success and abundance to where even children understood and successfully applied them. Therein is the great value of this recording and why it can be the turning point in your life. However, your life will not change overnight by just hearing it once. Listen to it twice a day, every morning and evening, as you go about your daily chores, and do what it says. And in one month, the most amazing things will begin happening to you and your family. Mr. Schof used to say, be naive enough to believe what I say for just 30 days, and you'll be on your way to a new life. That's why so many called him the millionaire maker. Recently, a prominent senator remarked, had I owned this record 10 years ago, I'd be in the White House today. In 1962, at the Essex House in New York City, Mr. Schultz was the key speaker at a large gathering of successful independent distributors from all over the United States. As we listen, he has just been introduced by the master of ceremonies. I just want to take a few moments and cover some things that have assisted me in acquiring things in my life. I know that you people are aware of these basic fundamental laws that operate in this world of ours. Some people are aware of them, some people are not aware of them, but they are using them. And sometimes we wonder why certain things happen to us, we acquire certain things, and then over a period of time, it seems like we live in stagnation. Nothing happens. Uh, nothing takes place. Everything seems to be at a standstill. But there are basic laws in this universe that we are governed by, and they work for you if you know how to apply them. And I would like to cover a couple of these laws just to assist you in knowing why these things happen. For an example, everybody... Uh, is aware of the law of gravitation. Now, we do not know how it works, but we know it works. It works for everybody. It doesn't matter whether you are a saint or whether you are uh, the opposite to a saint. Uh, if you jumped off a 20-story building and you are a saint and you land on a concrete sidewalk, you are going to be an unhealthy saint. 
If you happen to be a crook and you do the same thing, the same thing happens to you. So basically, it doesn't matter whether you're good or bad. If you use the law of gravity wrong, you are going to suffer. The law of electricity works for all of us. If we use it properly, we can light our homes by screwing a light bulb into a socket. If we stick our finger into it, then we get bit. Then you get burned. You can burn your house down with electricity or you can light your home with it. You can cook with it. You can use refrigeration. All the great things that electricity will do for us. You do not have to be an electrical-minded person. You don't have to be a genius to do it. A child three years old can push a button and turn the lights on. And whether the person was the greatest electronic engineer in the world, all he can do when he pushes that button is turn the lights on too. So basically it does not matter. The law of electricity will work for you. We have laws of success. We have laws of poverty. We have laws of lack. Laws of prosperity. We have laws of hate. We have laws of love. We have laws of peace. All of these are basic laws. If we use them rightfully, wonderful things will happen to us. If we use them wrong, then we get ourselves in trouble. Now, one of the things that always has bothered me is in all the books that I've ever read on setting goals in life, positive thinking, positive goals that we want in life, and many of you people have probably read the similar books, we follow these different steps, rules, laws, exactly, and if we set ten goals in life, we end up with two. We lose out on eight. So it is not like the law of gravity, seemingly, because it doesn't work every time. And the only reason it does not work every time is because we do not use the right law. We are only using part of the law, and so the law of averages will give you a certain percentage of your goals. That is all. You say, gee, wasn't that great? This happened to me. But whatever happened to all the other goals you had in life? I'm going to lay down a simple, basic way and you can have anything in this world you want to have, and you can be anything in this world you want to be, and it's a simple, basic situation. There's absolutely no problem to it. These are scientific things that work every time, if you will do it in a simple way. Now, the first thing that we want to become aware of, that we're going to be like farmers. We're going to plant seeds. And these seeds that we plant are the seeds we're going to reap. Now, we are all aware that if you plant a seed, a tomato, you are not going to get cucumbers. You're going to get tomatoes. If you plant a watermelon seed, you're not going to get grapefruit. You're not going to get radishes. If you want radishes, folks, you must plant radishes. And when you plant a seed in the earth, you must plant it properly. And if you do not plant it properly, you will not have the harvest. Now, one of the major problems in our country today with the average person, as they take the time and the effort to buy all the harvesting equipment, but they do not understand the planting and the cultivating. We want to reap harvest, but we do not want to take the time to plant, and we do not want to take the time to cultivate. Now, the planting of a seed in the earth is basically and absolutely the same process that you use in the mental world. We are born with a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. We are the only animal in the kingdom that has both a conscious and a subconscious mind. A mind to decide at any time in life where we want to go or what we want or what we don't want. We can decide with this conscious mind of ours at any moment whether we want to do a thing or we don't want to do it. We can decide what we want to eat or what we don't want to eat. We can decide what we want to drink or what we don't want to drink. We can decide what we want in life, in a home, in an automobile, in the clothes we wear, the stoves we buy, anything that we want in this world, any type of furniture, any type of a home, any type of an anything, we decide at any time right here. Now, where most people are making a mistake is they set their goals down. They say, well, what is your goals? Write them down. So the fellow sits down and he says, I want a car, I want a house, I want some furniture, I want some new clothes. I want some money, and this is the way they set their goals. 
Now, folks, if we had a whole group of seeds, let's take apple seeds. We had 50 different types of apple seeds. And we just grabbed any one of them out and said, we want apples. We throw them in the ground, they come up and they said, gee, those are green apples. I wanted red ones. Well, that's because you just picked any type of an apple seed. <coughs> you didn't describe it. So we must learn to define. Now, you've heard of the word of visualizing, that you have to learn to visualize things. And when you visualize something, this is the thing you're going to bring in your life if the visualization is strong enough. And we're always visualizing things in our life. But the, our tendency is to visualize negative situations. Now, the reason for visualizing negative situations is because, folks, let's not kid ourselves, we are living in a negative world. If I ask somebody, I says, by the way, Joe, how do you feel today? He says, good, fine. The next day I ask him how he feels, and he says, I feel terrible. I have had a pain in my stomach, and I have ache all over, and he goes into a, you think he was an actor. He can describe a negative situation in his body so wonderful, but when he feels good, he just says, fine. How come people, when they feel fine, they don't say, I feel great, I feel wonderful. I feel so great that I expect all the wonderful things in the world to happen to me today. In other words, have that little feeling when you talk about the good things in life. I say, how are you doing in business? The guy says, fine. And if he has a bad day, I says, how are you doing? He says, lousy. Oh, let me tell you, this is a, I, we're just having a terrible time. Uh, did you read that article the other day? It took me several hours to find it, but it was on the back page down at the bottom in fine print, but I located it. People like negative things. They seem to vibrate with them for some strange reason. They don't want things that are negative in their life, but they keep insisting on talking about them. And they can paint the most beautiful picture of loss and lack. Uh, immediately, I say, by the way, the internal, and everybody immediately starts shaking. <laughs> Combustion. <laughs> well, the guy says, you know what I thought you were going to say? <laughs> And he starts creating pictures. He says, oh, by the way, I wonder about last year, what I did with that, <laughs> you know. Uh, did I, I wonder if they'll find that. And immediately he said, I can see the guy come to the door now. <laughs> I wonder when, when he'll be here. I wonder what he'll look like. And he gets a beautiful picture. And the next thing you know, the guy is knocking on his door. <laughs> he created the picture and he brought it into his life. And the funny thing about creating things, folks, we are creators. Nothing comes to us. Everything comes through us, <coughs> from us. Everything in this world that happens to us comes from here, not out here. And everything that you have in your life is exactly what you designed. The dress you're wearing, the coat you're wearing, the tie you're wearing, the necklace you're wearing, the stole you're wearing, the home you're living in, the neighbors you got, the friends you got, and the distributors you got. So don't blame me for people that you attracted. <laughs> When you sign this person up, you're the guy that coaxed him in. And you didn't care who he was as long as he come in. And pretty soon you had 20 of them, and you says, you know what, Shelf? I got a lousy bunch of distributors. <laughs> well, when you understand these laws, you won't tell me these things. Because you are basically saying, and I am not talking about you. I'm not talking about you. I wouldn't dare. There's too many here. <laughs> but what I am saying is that everything we attract is what we are. And what I am speaks so loudly, I cannot hear what you say. And what you are speaks so loudly, I cannot hear what you say. You see, everything that you have is the things that you've created. So be careful about what you create. Be careful. It's hard to visualize a thing. I says, by the way, folks, let's visualize uh, a 707, shall we? You guys say, well, what does, a, what does a 707 look like? I have only been in there one a couple of times. I see one up in the air once. So it's hard to visualize one. You want to visualize an automobile or a stole or a, uh, I don't know why I keep saying stoles. My wife must be thinking of a stole. <laughs> I keep getting that feeling <laughs> every time we come to New York. <laughs> but you see... We have to learn to describe things. Now, I'm going to go through a description of a thing because this is very important in your lives, folks. Please listen and please try to remember what I'm saying. You can change your life that quick into everything wonderful. You can have everything wonderful happening to you if you use these basic, simple little things. 
Now, I'm going to describe a thing that, uh, an automobile, I'll talk about an automobile because uh, an automobile is easy to describe and then people can comprehend it very quickly and very easily. And I'm not going to talk about a Chevrolet. I'm going to talk about a Cadillac. And every time I talk about a Cadillac, folks, I'm not describing the Cadillac per se. I'm talking about a Cadillac idea. The Cadillac idea in the clothing, in the homes, and the things that you really desire deep within you. And I'm not talking about something that you say, well, I've got to have money to have a Cadillac. I'm not talking about money. It is not necessary that you have money to have a Cadillac. There's many wonderful things can happen to you where these things can come from, to you from very unusual sources. Many wonderful things can happen to you. If you believe in the thing that I'm talking about, and if you can do and go through the process I'm talking about, your incomes will be double, triple, quadruple. One of the things that I had in my, in my, the first thing, imagine a pants presser. The one thing that I had in my mind, that I had defined in my mind, was a red Cadillac convertible. I never owned a Cadillac in my life. Now, you probably don't want a red Cadillac, but I wanted one. And I defined that thing right down to its socks, and the end result was I had me a red Cadillac convertible, and my income increased to a point where it cost me nothing. This is visualizing. This is a positive attitude towards the things you want. Too many people stop their dreams because they start thinking about the thing that is not necessary in order to have it. I say to somebody, I say, do you want a new Cadillac? The guy says, I want one, but I can't afford it. I says, it has nothing to do with affording at this minute. I just want to know what you really want. Most people are afraid to define what they want in life. They're afraid to define it. They're afraid it's going to cost them something. But if you're making a thousand dollars a month right now, and you could double your income to $2,000 a month. You could have your Cadillac. You could have two Cadillacs. You could have five Cadillacs. So you don't have to worry about the income. I'm just talking about a principle now. Now, the Cadillac, what do you do about it? I'll say, Pete, what would you like to have? He says, a Cadillac. Now, don't forget, folks, I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to give it to him. So he has nothing to worry about. No money, no nothing. So I says, Pete, what do you want? He says, a Cadillac. I says, fine, Pete. Now, this is where people make their mistakes. I says, I got a nice 1936 beat-up model downstairs. I'll give it to you. He says, I don't want a 36 model Cadillac. I says, you just told me you wanted a Cadillac. He says, I want a 62 Cadillac. I says, why didn't you tell me, Pete? Why didn't you tell me? This is the way people set their dreams. They just say, I want a Cadillac. You want an orange one or a green one? He says, I want a red one. Now he's starting to define. And you know, it's very difficult to define up here in your mind. The best thing to do is to get a piece of paper, folks, and start defining on a piece of paper, a 1962 Cadillac, a red Cadillac, convertible. I'm just describing one car now. You can have any kind of car you want. A red Cadillac, 1962 convertible with a white top red and white upholstering, a red floor rug, white wall tires, electric windows, air conditioning unit. The guy says, how much does that cost? I says, don't worry about it, you're going to get it for nothing. The guy says, I'll take it then. <laughs> so now he says, I'm going to put everything down then, shouldn't I? And he says, that's right. Describe it right down the T. So he goes right through this Cadillac and he describes it, everything about this Cadillac that he wants. And when he gets all through, the perfect visualization is up here now. Because he has described it. When you write it, you start seeing it. Because he says, let's see now, a red Cadillac with a white top. What color bolstering? Now he says, let's see now, red, all red. No, I'd rather have red with a, a white in it. So he's, he gets the picture up here by writing it down here. This is how you define things that you want in this world. So he gets it all defined. When he gets that Cadillac completely defined in his mind, He's got the seed. He hasn't planted it yet. He's got it picked out. Now, the important thing is that you must release that seed. You must release it, and it must be planted. And the finest way, thing in the world to plant that seed is to take on this piece of paper now and just write across that thank you. That's the law of acceptance. And you would be amazed how many people in this world can't accept their good. You would be shocked. Thank you means that I have accepted it. 
I'm going to have it. I know it's mine. And then you take and fold this piece of paper up with this goal on it, with this dream, your desire, and you put it away, put it underneath a tablecloth someplace, or put it in a drawer someplace. Don't carry it around and don't take it out and look at it anymore. When you do this, that is planning it in the subconscious mind. You've accepted it, it goes into the subconscious mind, and the thing starts to work. Now, the reason you put this away, the reason you put this seed away after you have defined it and the seed has been planted in the subconscious mind, you put it away someplace, never to look at it again. And the reason for it is like planting the seed in the earth, folks. If you go and dig that seed up two or three times a day to look at it, nothing's going to happen. And if you've ever seen a lack of faith, it's the farmer who had the gullibility to go and dig a seed up to find out if it's growing yet. Now, there's real faith. He really believes in the, the laws of growth. And that's the same thing with us human beings. This is where we're making our mistakes. When we plant that seed in the subconscious mind, and it's there, the dream is there, the, the, the thing starts working towards you. The Cadillac starts to work towards you. Events starts taking place out here, and the first thing you know, it's getting closer and closer to you. Now, if we take it out and we look at it, the thing that happens is we say, I wonder where it's coming from. This is, a, this is a true showing of lack of faith. I wonder when it's coming. I wonder how it's coming. And so you are putting doubt into the law, and it will not come, folks. It will not come to you. Now, what's going to happen, the seed that you planted in the subconscious mind, you'll be driving down the street, you'll be in a restaurant talking to a friend, and all of a sudden this red Cadillac convertible with a white top, and the whole thing will hit you right again, or you'll see the, your dream. It'll keep coming back. The reason this thing keeps coming back to you, this is the only way that the universal law has of talking to you. There's no voice. That's all in visualization. And when this dream comes up, what it really means is it is on its way to you. It is on its way to you. It's right around the corner. And so you do not, at that time, say how, when, or where. All you do is say, thank you because you know it's on its way. And that immediately puts it back out of your mind. Now, how would you act if you really and truly wanted a red Cadillac convertible? If you really and truly wanted one, it was a strong desire in your life, and you knew it was on its way, how would you act? Man, you'd vibrate all over, wouldn't you? You'd feel terrific. You'd, say, you'd keep saying to yourself, man, it's almost here, it's almost here. You'd walk taller, you'd look taller, you'd be happier, you'd be more positive, you'd be more everything. And so you act different. You talk different. You even look like a prosperous person. You have things, wonderful things happening to you. Now, where does the positive attitude come in at? This automatically creates a positive attitude because it's a law of expectancy. Good things are going to happen. You have planted your seeds properly and they are working their self to you. And so you are automatically a positive person because all these wonderful things are going to happen. Now. Don't just have one seed planted, folks. Plant many seeds. Any great desire you have in your life for tangible objects or intangible objects. You can have anything in this world you want to have and you can be anything in this world you want to be by using this simple process. And there's absolutely no way you can keep success from your door if you will follow these basic, simple little process that I've just described. This is the law of life. And every one of you people have worked this process. But maybe you weren't completely aware of how you worked it. But think of what it, that's why you only get two out of eight things, or three out of eight, or one out of eight, or one out of ten. Because you didn't know exactly the process that you were using. Now you know the process. So you can do it with everything in this world. Children, our children, folks. How many times have you heard people say to their children, the child says, I'm going to be president of the United States. And the father and mother would say to him, you, with your studies, you'll never make it, Junior. Now, this is a wonderful seed to plant in this fertile little brain, the subconscious, this fertile little mind. You are telling him he can't. He isn't smart enough. The child says, I'm going to be 
a rich man when I grow up. I'm going to have everything in this world. He says, you, you're going to have to learn a lot, Junior. One thing, you don't know how to handle money. You've got to learn to use that old elbow grease. Anybody that's ever used the elbow grease, I don't know, has ever made millions on me, I'll assure you. The elbow grease is up here, and very few people use that. Now, what do you want to tell Junior? Anytime any children come to you or to the parents, you should tell your children this. They say, Junior, you're the type of child that can have anything in this world. You have the ability and the intelligence to go anywhere, do anything, and have everything in this world. It is yours because you're that type of a child. Start planting these seeds in our children. This country today is teaching too many children, too many children, what to think instead of how to think. And what are we? We are only children a little older than the other children. And we are growing up children. And we have to, at some time in life, we have to start deciding and pinpointing things that we want in this world. And I am not just talking about the tangible objects. I'm talking about the intangible things. What would you like to be? What type of person would you like to be? Would you like to have more love in your life? Well, then you must learn to give love. You'll never have anything without giving. Everything I give, I receive back, multiplied. If I have a lot of hate in my life, I'm giving hate out. And so if I don't want hate coming in my life, I should not be giving it out. If I don't want people to talk about me, I shouldn't be talking about people. Everything that I send out, I get back with feeling. Every thought I think, I don't get because I did not plant my seed properly. I did not have a true visualization. How many of you ladies have thought of a, a beautiful uh, dress, a beautiful dress, or a beautiful something that you wanted to have? How many of you just said, I would love to have a mink stole? A few years ago, if my wife even mentioned the mink stole, the first thing that came come in my mind is, where are you going to get it from? How are you going to pay for it? And I did not understand these things. When you just say a mink stole, you know what? I never was aware that there were so many mink stoles in the country. Every kind at every price and color and designs and everything else. And if you don't even know the exact kind you want, how do you ever expect to have it? Huh? That's like somebody saying, you know the amazing thing? The average person in this room, and I'm only saying this people because we are the average people of the world. And I'm not saying this, and I say average because I am talking to an intelligent group of people. I'm not talking to the people way down the ladder. I'm talking to a group of intelligent people. And I'm saying this. If you analyze this yourself and ask yourself this basic question, do you know what you want in life? If I was to ask you right now, what do you really want? What are the tangible objects that you want in this world, the things that you can feel and touch and smell? What are these things that you want in life? And you know, folks, the amazing thing, I doubt if there's 2% of the people in this room could tell me and describe it and just like that come right out and say it. Because they have not been completely defined. He said, I want a new home. I said, what kind of a home would you like? He says, well, let's see now. Um, I think I'd like a two-story building. No, this is a good way to pick your home. This is, you think you'd like a two-story building. You don't know how many bedrooms. You haven't laid out a design. You don't know exactly what you want. And this is why, folks, that, you know what happens? We get a lot of things just left over from the people who know what they want. That's why we do not get the things. We haven't defined it. We do not know exactly what we want. How much success do you want? You guys, I want a lot of money. Let me tell you the importance in defining things. This is a very, very important thing. Very important. Boy, you can get yourself messed up something awful if you don't follow this properly. A friend of mine, I told him about this idea of creating a vision. Because when you get the vision of the Cadillac once more, you, you can even get the feeling of the thing. You can even see yourself in it. 
You can get the feeling of that thing. This is, this is where things happen quick for you. And I told this person about visualizing things, defining what he wanted, but he didn't define it completely. This was his dream. He wanted to take an ocean voyage. And he got the feeling of the ocean voyage and everything else. He was in the, this ship and the bow of the ship, you know, and the waves were rolling and the, the breeze was blowing in his face and the salt water was blowing in his face and, and he had all the feeling and everything else. And within one year's time, this dream come back to him because he was standing on the bow of the ship. And the swell of the waves and the breeze was blowing in his face and the salt water was hitting him on, the, in the, on his face. But he forgot to define it completely and he was taking his voyage, he was in the service. <laughs> Be sure and define your dream exact. <laughs> My niece, ever since she was born, she's now 20, 21 years old. We have been teaching her these ideas but you know, people don't hear so good. You know, they, they just hear what they want to hear. They, for some strange reason, you tell a guy you want it. What do you want? You can have anything in the world you want to have. Anything. You name it. You can have anything. And the guy says, well, I haven't got the time to write it down. He can go out. If I says, if you dig a ditch from here to Washington, D.C., six feet deep, three feet wide, I'll give you a million dollars. The guy get a shovel and start right in digging. But if I say, I'll give it to you, the guy says, yeah, it can't be. Isn't that amazing? My niece, we've been telling her this thing over and over and over about visualizing and pinpointing the things that she wanted in her life. I said, what do you want? She said, money, money. I said, how much money? She said, just big piles of money. <laughs> and so she got this feeling. She could see it in her mind, piles of money, just counting out piles of it, you know. Hundred dollar bills and fifties and, and coins and just money all over every place. And within six months' time, within six months' time, she was counting out money in a bank. <laughs> she was a clerk in a bank, a cashier. She did not define it, that it was her money she was counting. <laughs> now, that's why these things are important. It's important to define things. It's like a fellow says, I said, what do you want? He says, I want to earn a thousand dollars a week. I said, you better get a little closer to it than that, Buster. You're not defining it. He said, well, what's wrong with that? I said, I know a lot of people that are earning $1,000 a week, and they're only getting 50 <laughs> So you want to say, I want to earn, and I want to receive $1,000 a week. Now, there's one thing about the subconscious mind, folks. It does not play favorites. It doesn't kid. It doesn't fool. And everything that you plant there, you're going to reap. That's why you want to be sure that you plant exactly what you want. That's why people are getting all the time things they don't want. The guy says, I want a house. So he gets a house, any kind of a house. But he gets it. He says, how come we get a house like this? This isn't exactly what we wanted. We've been in here three months. We should have had three bedrooms instead of two. And he says, how come we got this? Well, here, this is, he didn't know what he wanted, so he just, he just got a house. He didn't define it. He wouldn't have had that house if he had defined it. And so that is with everything in this world, everything. If you want to, if you want to be a, a happier person, define the type of person you would like to be. Define it, pinpoint it, write it down, write across there. Thank you. Plan it deeply. And once you do it, don't worry about it anymore. This is going to happen to you. All wonderful things are going to happen to you to make you a happy person. You want more success? How much success? You know, when I was working in the dry cleaning business, I was making a hundred bucks a week, less than a hundred bucks. And you know what happened? Hundred dollars a week. If somebody told me it paid me two hundred dollars a week, I thought, oh man, <laughs> this is the end. This is the end. I could retire practically on two hundred dollars a week. So what is success? What is success? If I talked to a man who's making three thousand dollars a month and told him I was going to pay him two hundred dollars a week, he wouldn't be very happy about the situation. So what is success in your life? What is it that you want? Define it. Write it down. Pinpoint every drop of the, that dream that you have in your mind. Define it so clearly on that piece of paper that you can completely see it in your mind. And when you get it written down, write thank you on it and plant that seed and put it away. 
and it'll start to materialize. It'll start coming into your life. That is anything, folks, anything, anything. All right, guys, so I'm going to put down the Statler Hotel. You know why it wouldn't work for him? You know why it wouldn't work for him? I know, I'm not saying it won't work for the good fellow, but I'm saying it won't work for the average person. And you know why? He couldn't even imagine getting it. He can write it down. He can define it. He can put thank you on it. But he can never plant the seed. And the reason he can, because he couldn't even imagine getting the Statler Hotel. That's why. Now, don't forget, this is something that you have to accept. You're going to have it, folks. I, I've told people about a Cadillac, the uh, average people working on average jobs. I said, do you want a Cadillac? The guy said, well, no, I don't want no Cadillac. And I said, well, why don't you want a Cadillac? He says, well, for one thing, he says, it costs so much to operate them. <laughs> and so, see, he doesn't want one. He isn't ready for that step yet. Now, so he steps from one car to another to another. He raises his consciousness until pretty soon he can buy Cadillacs like the average guy buys a pair of shoes. And you can grow. You can grow in your thinking. I've had people say, boy, you got to be careful about people. You know, they'll take you in if you're not careful. And they get such a wonderful visualization, they're always getting taken in. <laughs> and so you see how we build these pictures in our minds. People will spend the morning. They're going to get ready for a wonderful day. Tomorrow morning, now, we're getting ready for a wonderful day. We're going out, and it's going to be the most successful day we've ever had in our entire life. I said, how are you going to start the morning? Exactly what are you going to do? He said, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go out on the porch. He's going through his morning now. He's going out on the porch, and he's going to get his newspaper. He's going to get his newspaper. And read a little bit about positive thinking on the headlines. <laughs> and if he can't find it there, he'll look and look and look and look until he finds something that is really good and negative. And then he'll tell his wife and describe it. She says, guess what I found in the paper? And he starts telling them about some wonderful divorce that's taken place, and the kids, they committed suicide. <laughs> and he'll go on to this, and he says, and just imagine that. Imagine what's happening here. And he'll describe it, and he'll describe it, and he'll go on with his negativity, and the negativity will get started, and the wife will get negative, and he will get more negative. And when he gets all through with breakfast now, he's in such a nasty mood that he don't even like his dog. <laughs> And he's going out to face the world for the positive attitude. Do you see how ridiculous it is, folks? Do you see how ridiculous it is and some of the ridiculous things we do in life and we wonder why success doesn't always come to us in the proportion that we'd like to have it come to us? <laughs> Expect wonderful things. Be a creator of ideas. Let's not be moons, the reflector of ideas. Let's be suns. Let's be the creator of the light. Let's be the creator of the ideas because we all have a capacity. You know, that the guardian of the gate is the conscious mind. This guardian can at any time let any thought through to the subconscious mind at once. Any thought at any time. We are thinking human beings. We have the capacity to think of anything, anything in this world we can think of. But we do not have the capacity to think of nothing. Now, you try to imagine what nothing is. Try to get a thought of that. There is absolutely no way. So that means that we are thinking human beings and there's thoughts flying through our mind continuously. A steady flow of thoughts all the time coming through the mind. Now, where do these thoughts come from? All of a sudden you say, gee, that, comes, uh, that just must have come out of a clear blue sky. It must have been, come out of clear blue to me. You didn't think of it. In fact, it might be something you didn't even know about. And the thought comes through and you say, well, that's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? That couldn't happen to me. And so you throw that thought aside. And if it's a good thought, why not accept it and stop it and analyze it and accept it and let it happen to you? And these thoughts are coming through our mind all the time. But a negative thought comes through and it stops there for a minute and say, boy, that's a good negative thought. I'll have to stop and analyze that one. And you start thinking about it and pretty soon you get a frown on your face and you think about it a little more and you create a beautiful picture and all of a sudden you put that down in the subconscious and you say, boy, there's another bad thing's going to happen to me. Have you ever caught yourself thinking about something you didn't want to think about and you've been thinking about it for five minutes and all of a sudden you say, what am I thinking about that nasty thing for? We do it. We do it all the time, folks. But we can stop now anytime we want. And we can change that thought and put in a good thought. If you don't want to think about oranges, change the thought and think about bananas if you want. 
If you don't want to think about lack, change the thought and think about prosperity. If you don't want to think about uh, hate, think about love. If you don't want to think about uh, anything that is negative, put a, a positive idea in your head. And you know what happens? And you can analyze it and you can just dream about it and everything else and get all these seeds planted properly and have all these wonderful things happen. Get 20 wonderful seeds planted. Get them written down. Be fine. Thank you. Plant them into the subconscious mind. Put it away. And every time it comes back into the mind and the law is saying it's on its way, you just say thank you. Don't analyze it because it's already planted. Just say thank you and go on. And have 10, 15, 20, 30 of these wonderful seeds planted and folks, you'll walk on air and you'll have miracles happen in your life. And don't be afraid to do this. If your wife isn't in harmony with the wonderful things that you want to happen to you, or if the husband isn't in harmony with you, or if the children aren't, or your friends aren't, you don't have to show them. Plant your seeds privately then and put them away privately and plant them deep. And all these wonderful things will happen and say, you know, the one thing about that person, I don't know what happened to them, but man, oh man, everything they touch turns to gold. And that's the reason. That's the reason, folks. The planting properly of your seeds. It's a real pleasure being here with you. Thank you very much.